It is time for Dr. Judy Workman and Food for Mood. Of course, Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, serotoninpowerdiet.com, and also author of Simon Loses His Tummy and probably a big fan of dinosaurs. Good morning, Dr. Workman. <laughs> What's your opinion? Well, I'm feeling like one, but other than that. <laughs> that's, that's right. Come sit next to me. I'm what a is your opinion? What is your opinion of, uh, of uh, dinosaurs? You know, I, 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 I bet I you are a scientist. Somebody would really come up with a good explanation of why they are no more, but I'm really delighted I don't see them <laughs> roaming the beach oh, we have in of, Miami. We have plenty of, really would make a big nuisance. We have plenty of dinosaurs. <laughs> They're roaming the halls of Washington. <laughs> yeah, for example. Exactly. Eno. Exactly. And most of them are old and white. All right, what kind of <laughs> fictional character? He's a pet dinosaur. Yeah, but what kind was he? All right. Let's talk about excessive drinking while I figure out what kind of dinosaur Dino was, okay? okay? Well, what you, the reason I, I, I wrote about depression and drinking is that uh, I had come across an article, and there's so many of them talking about uh, excessive drinking during the holidays because the opportunity is there, and it seems to you know, fit in with the, the spirit of getting together at parties or family dinners or, uh, you know, after... A, office parties where, where alcohol certainly is or cert- often is freely available and you know the idea <clears throat> the, the idea is to you know drink have a good time loosen up you know enjoy the end of the year festivities and you know many people warn about the uh, effects of you know the excessive alcohol intake especially or the availability of it especially for people who are struggling to control their drinking who are and perhaps uh, you know n- not alcoholics but but they have problems with sobriety. And, and, and it also, there are also a lot of you know, articles that talk about the fact that the holidays bring with it you know, a, uh, the potential for depression for those of, who are not able really to participate in the holiday spirit because they're alone or uh, they, they uh, are, are not um, able to or, you know, have a lifestyle that gives them opportunities to be with other people. And so a lot of people, because of their loneliness especially, turn to drink. And, and so there obviously are suggestions as, as to how to really handle that so that you don't end up, you know, on January 2nd really wondering, you know, uh, what, what you've been imbibing and, you know, and how, what your, how your body is going to deal with this. But there's something that people, I think, have not realized, and that is that people may drink a lot starting now, the holiday season, you know, going through the beginning of January, not simply because the drink is there, the eggnog, the, the champagne, or what have you, but because the lack of light and the development of winter depression, seasonal affective disorder, brings with it its own vulnerability to uh, excessive alcohol intake. Uh, and I, I had, uh, in fact, I had not realized this because I, I knew, you know, for years that one of the, the effects of winter depression is that people eat more. Weight gain is indeed one of the prominent, sim- prominent symptoms of, of winter depression, the winter blues. But I, I had not realized that you know, ac- excessive alcohol intake was. And apparently there are a lot of articles showing that uh, when people become depressed, not because they aren't invited to a party they want to go to or they're sitting and eating their Thanksgiving turkey alone, but because the lack of light itself is causing them to be depressed, that they turn to alcohol I as want to a throw something. medication. I want to throw something else in here, too, because finally, after 20-some odd years, there's some, you know, fi- finally there's some really interesting research coming out about the effects of screens on people. And when you throw the screens, which are linked to... Um, when, when I say screens, it's the whole social media. Yeah, co- yeah screen, cell phones sc- and what have you. Yeah. yeah, screens against um, actual human interaction. Um, yeah, uh, you are raising the depression quotient, uh, the you know the unworthiness, the self esteem, all that uh, use, uh, unhelpful, all of those right. unhelpful things. And when you throw that into the mix as well, I mean, yeah, it's like a perfect dry, storm. Exactly, because dry tinder. Yeah, you, you, you know, you have the holidays, you have the people who see on Instagram or their Facebook somebody else. Oh, then they're are being, perfect. Yeah, and, and being surrounded by, you know, the Norman Rockwell, uh, we're all together having a wonderful time, and then you are alone, and it's dark, and you're depressed anyway. You know, alcohol is, is a quick 
method to really change your mood. I mean, it doesn't work too long, and it wears off, and, uh, you know, it has all sorts of horrible side effects, including, and I think one of the reasons I really wrote this article was that a, a, somebody I know, my husband and I know very well, died recently of the effects of alcohol intake, and he was in his 50s, you know, and it sort of shocked me because I somehow didn't realize this day and age people were still dying of, of excessive alcohol intake, you know, naive that I am. And I thought, this is something that's too overlooked. And I'm, I'm even wondering if, you know, your, your doctor knows about this. You know, your doctor asks whether you're, how much you drink if you go for your yearly exam, but, you know, don't people lie? And and if you're sitting alone, because you are depressed, because, as you say, Jill, you have no self-esteem and you see others who seem to be having the perfect life, you know, turning to alcohol may seem for some people unavoidable. And, and, and yet, what's interesting is that, um, especially for people who are drinking because they are suffering from winter depression, you know, seasonal affective disorder, it really turns out that light exposure from these sun boxes or light boxes that people are supposed to sit in front of, you know, in the morning when they wake up, really might have an effect on decreasing the depression, decreasing, you know, the uh, tendency to perhaps to, to drink too much. And that seems like such a simple solution. And I think people forget about it. I mean, these light boxes are not inexpensive. I think, I don't know, maybe they cost $50 or something, but certainly less than, you know, your monthly supply of antidepressants. And, and, and but, but even so, you may even need the antidepressants. But the point is, there are solutions to this than simply sitting at home and, and drinking and then suffering really the, sometimes the, the, the life-threatening effects of too much alcohol intake. I think it's something for people to realize that when people are depressed on the holidays, it's not simply because they, uh, Aunt Mary doesn't talk to them at Thanksgiving dinner and uh, they, they don't want to, and they're not avoided to any of the Christmas festivities. You know, they're just watching it on the television screen. But there really are things that people can do. And if they're less depressed, you know, it has a positive effect because maybe they will start interacting with other people and not feel so alone. And, and you know, and, and, and one of the things that people certainly can do during the holiday season if they do feel left out is go and volunteer. There's so many institutions which really need people, where they, people are needed to help fill in the gaps when people are taking time off because of the holidays. And just being around, you know, cleaning dog cages at an animal shelter or, or reading to somebody in a hospital, you know, these are things that, that I think... Yeah, or, or going to going to visit at uh, you know you know going to visit uh, people at uh, um, <clears throat> you know in 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 assisted living etc. You know th- exactly there's all there, there's there's all sorts of stuff that you can do and again it used to, that that used to be the first antidote now it's something yeah. else and we sorry to be old fashioned but if we could get back to taking an action that actually has a beneficial effect on someone else which then reflects back on you it's you know it's, it's automatic it's sort of you pet a dog dog smiles you feel good it's really You're absolutely right chill and we forget about basic. it I mean, oh i'll stay home and watch netflix for or amazon prime or something yeah. like that for five hours rather than getting yourself out you're right and going to visit somebody who never has any opportunity to see or talk to a human being except perhaps somebody who delivers meals on wheels you're absolutely right. And, it's just, um, it, it and we just, forget about it. It just seems like an automatic. You know, it's too bad we can't just turn off the screens for a couple of hours and say, go out and do something good for somebody. Works for me. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. All right. Well, let's hope that it is. A, anyway, we'll talk to you next Thursday, but have a happy, have a happy Thanksgiving preparation. In the meanwhile. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Judy Wortman, Food for Mood. And, of course, you can hear Judy Wortman uh, on the radio live, but also... On Demand, RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on Food for Mood with Dr. Judy Werping.